Excellencies, distinguished delegates, colleagues, dear friends, I apologize for not being able to join you for this ministerial conference preceding the fifth session of the governing body of the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture. But I thank you for the opportunity to make some remarks through this video. The theme on this ministerial conference touches on water, food security, climate change, and genetic resources. Some of the most serious issues faced by the world today and key challenges that feature strongly in contemporary discussions of sustainable development post-2015. This is also reflected in the themes for the two international years currently being observed by the United Nations. Not only has 2013 been declared the International Year of Quinoa, an ancient food crop with great potential to contribute to food security, but 2013 is also the International Year of Water Cooperation, drawing attention to the benefits of cooperation in water management. I invite you to consult the booklet launched for the International Day on Biological Diversity this year. Indeed, food security, agriculture, and water are closely interwind. The genetic diversity of crops, both domesticated varieties and their wild relatives, is an essential resource and provides security for the continued improvement of crop varieties, particularly under changing climates. Increasing the resilience of food production systems and landscape significantly reduces risks from water-related disasters such as floods, droughts, and landslides. It is in this light that we may appreciate the critical importance of plant genetic diversity for achieving food security and sustainable development. The conservation and sustainable use of this biological diversity is at the heart of both the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture, as well as the Convention on Biological Diversity and its Nagoya Protocol on Access and Benefit Sharing. The Nagoya Protocol was adopted in 2010 to further the third objective of the Convention regarding access to genetic resources and their fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from their use. Its adoption opens a new era of cooperation between the CBD and the treaty. The protocol recognizes the special nature of genetic resources for food and agriculture, and I have no doubt that mutually supportive implementation of the protocol and the treaty can ensure enhanced access to genetic resources and the sharing of benefit arising from their use. Both the treaty and the protocol also recognize the important role of communities in conserving and sustainably using plant genetic resources. It's essential that traditional knowledge is valued appropriately by those who utilize it. This means making sure that access to traditional knowledge associated with the genetic resources is subject to prior informed consent of the indigenous and local communities involved and that they obtain fair and equitable benefits arising from their use. With respect to the collaboration between the treaty and the CBD, further to the Memorandum of Cooperation signed in COP10, to enhance collaboration in areas of mutual interest, we have launched a joint initiative of cooperation at the margins of the Rio Plus 20 Earth Summit regarding activities in support of the ratification of the Nagoya Protocol in its harmonious implementation with the treaty in its multilateral system for access and benefit sharing. The CBD International Treaty Joint Initiative foresees inter alia expanded joint capacity building initiatives, continuing of preparation of joint materials on ABS for the harmonious implementation of the two instruments, continued coordination and sharing of expertise on information uh, management for ABS and facilitation of greater interaction. We have already embarked on a number of these activities together, such as a series of joint capacity building workshops. Now we need to demonstrate that our collaboration can bring new value added and clear results to governments and society as a whole. 
I would like in particular to promote a broad collaborative partnership with the treaty and other institutions to strengthen the in situ conservation of agrobiodiversity for food security. This would contribute to achieving Aichi biodiversity targets 11, 13 and 18 of the strategic plan for biodiversity and tar targets 9 and 13 of the global strategy for plant conservation uh, under the Convention on Biological Diversity. Associated with this, we have just launched the Bridging Agriculture and Conservation Initiative, which brings together the agriculture and conservation communities to find ways to articulate sustainable intensification of food production with the ability of landscapes to regenerate and provide multiple goods and services. Excellencies, I would also be remiss if I did not recall that 2011 to 2020 is the United Nations Decade on Biodiversity. The decade contributes to the implementation of the Strategic Plan for Biodiversity, which was adopted at COP10 of the CBD in 2010. Aichi Target 16 of the Strategic Plan concerns the entry into force of the Nagoya Protocol by 2015. We are well on the way to meeting this target. The Nagoya Protocol obtained 92 signatures by the closing date for signature, <coughs> and to date, 19 parties to the Convention have deposited their instrument of ratification or accession. We are also aware that more countries intend to deposit their instrument of ratification during the UN Treaty event, which begins next week, bringing us to half of the 50 ratifications required for the protocol to enter into force. Furthermore, a number of countries are in the process of finalizing their national level procedures towards ratification and it is clear that the momentum is building to bring the protocol into force ahead of the 12th meeting of the conference of the parties so that the first meeting of the parties to the Nagoya protocol could take place in October 2014 in the Republic of Korea. I take this opportunity to encourage you all to expedite your national process towards ratifying or acceding to the protocol, which will also ensure that your country can sit as a party during the first meeting of the parties to the Nagoya Protocol and play an important role in the decision-making process for the further development and implementation of the protocol. I would also like to inform you that, as requested by the General Assembly in Resolution 67-212, the Secretariat, in collaboration with the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, DESA, is making arrangements for a special event in the Second Committee of the 68th Session of the General Assembly in October this year. In this event, the United Nations Environment Program the World Intellectual Property Organization, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, the United Nations Development Program, the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, the Secretariat of the Convention and other relevant United Nations bodies will provide a joint briefing on the implementation of the ob objectives of the Convention on Biological Diversity, including actions undertaken to promote access to genetic resources and their fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from their utiliz utilization and associated, associated traditional knowledge. We are all deeply aware of the challenges facing our common goal of achieving sustainable food production and nutrition security, and the important role genetic resources can play in meeting these challenges. The achievements under the, the Nagoya Protocol will contribute to the strengthening of the implementation of the treaty, while the treaty's success will support the CBD in accomplishing our mandate. I thus could not be more pleased with our collaboration to date and I look forward to many more opportunities for us to work together in the future as a contribution towards achieving global goals. I wish you a very successful and productive meeting. Thank you for your kind attention.